Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace, blessings, and mercy of God be upon you. This is a presentation about the Tablighi Jamaat Nizamuddin Markaz, the center in Delhi, the capital of India, and the coronavirus outbreak, the iteration of facts and establishment of the timeline. There's been a certain narrative which has been pushed on the Indian media and the social media, but I've not seen a complete breakdown of the facts and the establishment of timeline where you can determine what actually happened and what didn't happen. When it comes to India, you need to understand that India is the fake capital of the world. Those who are doing propaganda distort images, videos, and twist facts and present them in a certain manner and those who are defending them do exactly the same thing so what i suggest that you do is to pause this video at certain times because i'm going to give you some facts i would like you to go and verify it and this timeline cannot be disputed with it is a fact so first press trust of india tweeted on the 15th of March 2020 that the Prime Minister of India said we started screening people entering India from mid-January itself while gradually increasing restrictions on travel. PM Modi on coronavirus. So if you've arrived into India from any international port from January 15th 2020 onwards you've been screened. So you've been found to be coronavirus free according to the Prime Minister of India. If that if that is not done, then that's a, that's because it's not been implemented properly or people are not being trained or the kits are invalid, the test kits, that is. Or there's a there's a problem of, of governance and breakdown. This is what the, the Prime Minister of India claimed from mid-January. The reason it's important is Holi was celebrated in India on March 10th. Who, those who don't know, it's a festival in Hinduism where there's a lot of fireworks and, you know, sweets are distributed and people uh, throw colors and rub colors on each other. A lot of foreigners travel into India at that time to, uh, and you will see this uh, covered widely in India on March 10th. There were no restrictions. There was no self-isolation or isolation or social distancing. People touching each, each other, partying and so on and so forth. And you'll see many vlogs on YouTube and you can even Google and read the news in India. There are no restrictions whatsoever. Tablighi Jamaat is a reformational uh, group in amongst Muslims which started before the independence of India in a place in a neighborhood of capital of India called Nizamuddin. They basically focus on Muslims returning to the basics of Islam, prayers and remembrance of God and so on and so forth and having good relationships within the community, within the country and also worldwide. They're completely apolitical, there's no registration, there's no membership cards, there's no headquarters or so on and so forth and they're also non-violent. Ijtima means a gathering where people gather together and scholars give speeches about it for a few days. So before it started on the 13th of March and ended on the 15th of March. Before that, there were no restrictions in India about gathering. Gatherings are taking place. For example, I told you about Holi, March 10th. You can easily Google and check images and YouTube videos. People are freely touching each other and so on. That was the guidance by the Indian government. The day after, in the same city of Delhi, the Hindus believe that the urine of the cow has certain healing properties. So there was a, uh, a, a, a communal gathering uh, where people gathered together and they jointly drank the urine of the cow. Once again, you can watch it um, on the internet. It was widely covered in the Indian media in the same city on March 14th, the day after this Ijtima actually started. The Ijtima, the gathering, ended on the 15th of March. And these cow urine drinking parties continued throughout India and there's lots and lots of press coverage. So the point I'm trying to make is while this gathering or ichtima happened, there was zero instructions from the Indian Health Department and zero um, shutdown or lockdown of any kind whatsoever. This is an indisputable fact. Moving on. On Sunday, the 22nd of March, the Indian Prime Minister did something utterly bizarre. So what he did is he told people that we're going to have a people curfew. I want you to isolate yourself this Sunday. And on at a certain given time, I want you to clap. I want you to beat pots and pans and stuff to celebrate the good work of, of doctors and nurses and the health professionals. So people came out partying on the 22nd of March, 2020, you know, beating thali called pots and pans and making a general racket 
and once again you can watch this on youtube you can watch the images the reason being is once again this comes from hindu mythology that certain sec certain people believe that if you make certain noises on that sunday it will disrupt the um the spread of the virus so remember that the ijtima the gathering has ended a week before that so this is this is quite bizarre actually the capital of india on the 22nd the chief minister is saying that we will put the capital in a lockdown and completely seal it while on the same day you know half an hour before that the prime minister is congratulating the people for from from on coming to the streets and beating pots and pans and things like that and you can watch all of this as a fact this cannot be disputed when this gathering of tablighis ended a lot of people go back home whether they come from india or internationally they started going home so on the 23rd up to 1500 people are evacuated up to 1000 still remain however the capital is now in lockdown literally less than a day later the prime minister of india issues additional guidance to begin to move india towards a lockdown so the thousand people that are inside this small mosque are now in a lockdown they cannot go anywhere so what they do is the the people in the tablighi markas they notify the police they're saying look we've got all these people and what they do is they try to do the best they can put them in some kind of an isolation remember this the city is in an end is, is sealed as per the chief minister the next day they receive a, a notice from the station house officer the, the police officer who's in charge of the local police station saying you've got to clear these people up they said we cannot clear these people up because we're in a lockdown trains have stopped planes have stopped buses have stopped the only way to move these people out is through vehicles so these are the 17 vehicles we're going to use these are the registration plates and licenses numbers give us passes so we can move these people out they respond to the police and they also uh, fill out the appropriate paperwork to get the permissions to be able to transport these people via cars on the 25th of march the local tehsildar government official and medical team come to the markas they know about the situation they inspect the makeshift isolation facilities and they go away on the 22nd the sdm the subdivisional magistrate of delhi comes they once again tell him that look we need to move these people out we've asked you for the passes why aren't you giving us the passes so we can move these people out he says talk to my boss who is the divisional magistrate they have a meeting with the divisional magistrate once again they list the the license plate and the registration of the vehicles that they will use to move these people out okay and they say look give us passes we can move this out the next day six of the people are are uh, removed and placed uh, um, you know uh, moved to a nearest hospital the next day on the 28th of march the stm visits the facilities the second time this time with the delegation of world uh, health uh, organizations medical personnel they looked at these uh, facilities the point i'm trying to make is the indian government uh, is well aware of what's happening in this place however on the same day they get a letter from the assistant commissioner police this time not even the sho saying you've got evacuated once again they respond to him to say listen yes we know about it we've been asking you to give us the passes we can move these people out but that hasn't been responded to and then on the 30th of march hell breaks loose and the indian police there's an operational paramilitary police is deployed drones are deployed and this becomes an issue uh, it, it, the Indian media starts to push without presenting you this timeline now what I would like you to do is in the description of this YouTube video um, there is a um, I'm going to give you link to a single tweet where you can read all of this yourself these are the facts that cannot be disputed with they have responded in writing uh, within the timeline of, uh, of the, uh, that Twitter link that I'm going to give you you can read the letter yourself and you can find out what they've been trying to do now this lockdown in India has been an absolute disaster from the day it's been announced by the international media the reason being is india there's a lot of migration that takes place people rely on buses trains and so on and so forth and when you all of a sudden lock the entire country down you're going to end up in a disaster because these people have nowhere to go they're basically living on the streets many people have lost their lives because of this callous um, uh, governance and callous, callous um, order by the indian government to the extent that the Indian Prime Minister himself is, the BBC report from 29th of March had to apologize and seek forgiveness because of the hardship he's brought. Even after that, BBC reports, Indian India's pandemic lockdown turns into human tragedy. It has been a disaster. 
international media is comparing India's lockdown to Bangladesh's lockdown, which is next door. So Bangladesh has similar migrant movements, but what they did is they made sure they gave people enough notice for people to go to the places of safety. Uh, and the lockdown has been generally well uh, handled in Bangladesh. Last thing, it is a, a, a pattern in India that whenever there are elections or mis mismanagement of the government or a scandal, then immediately the attention of the media and everybody else turns to either Pakistan or the Muslims. So basically divert attention away from the fact. The fact is that you can watch videos in India where these poor migrant workers are dying on the streets. They're being sprayed with chemicals like cockroaches, right? People are in lockdown, but the media is talking about one incident without giving a timeline that this actually happened when there were other cow urine drinking parties, holy and all kinds of other things happening throughout India. And the reason these people are stuck inside a building is because the government of India has refused to either give it, give pass to the Tablighi Markas, the center to move, evacuate them, or the Indian government taking active steps to evacuate these people, whether they're foreigners or residents of India. So this has been an abject failure of governance. And once again, as has been a pattern, doesn't matter whether you're talking about the right-wing Indian government, which is the Modi government, or the previous governments, the modus operandi is to always take attention away from facts, never present a timeline, never present what actually happened, but go and talk about either Pakistan or Muslims. This is it. So I know a lot of, lot of non-Muslims uh, from India. They watch my videos and they actually send me feedback and emails and stuff like that. It doesn't matter what you believe in about Muslims and so on and so forth. You cannot argue with this timeline. It is a fact. The, you know, you cannot twist it. The only way you can twist it is if you have some ulterior, ulterior motive. You cannot argue with the fact that this ishtama happened on the 13th and ended on the 15th. And basically, there were all kinds of things happening in India around it. I try to give my keep my videos as brief as possible otherwise I can I can dig into each of these and present you all kinds of events that were happening in India at that time but I hope that this helps anybody who starts to put the blame on Muslims or the Tablighi Jamaat and so on and so forth know that this is the usual practice in India whenever there's basically a complete breakdown of governance complete mismanagement attention always focuses to Pakistan or Muslims may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you my prayer is with you your loved ones and may god keep you all safe may god keep you secure and may god give you prosperity thank you very much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh